Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, as it massively helps out the channel. 95,000, you cheeky so-and-sos. <laughs> Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account who says, am I the arsehole for reading my co-worker's fan fiction in front of everyone at work? I guess the title sounds bad, but please hear me out. I, 27 male, am a general manager at a fast food restaurant. Not gonna say which because I don't want to get in trouble with my assistant manager, Sophie, 23 female. Me and Sophie get along pretty well. We joke fight about stuff all the time and like to prank each other a lot, like prank calls or making the other do fake orders or writing fake surveys about the other or splashing soda on the other. We end up working together a lot since we get a bunch of call outs, especially at night and Sophie likes to pick up extra hours. We both climbed up in the couple of years that we've worked there and have a good relationship. When it's dead, Sophie likes to write fan fiction on her phone, which I sometimes tease her about. A while back, I made Sophie read me a line that she was writing and we were making jokes about it. Last week, I suddenly remembered the fan fiction again and decided to try and find it. I remembered the line she had read to me and was able to search for it online using quotation marks. I'm not going to say which show it's from because I don't want anyone to find it, but it was shocking to read. Pretty much the two characters in it worked at a fast food chain and ended up falling in love. It got pretty graphic at some parts too. The main character was essentially a representation of Sophie, and the love interest was basically me. I mean right down to copying conversations that we've had at work. He even had a wife that he was cheating on to be with her. I'm married, but I would never do such a thing. Anyway, a few nights ago, Sophie and the rest of the team threw a party to celebrate a couple of wins, and of course, Sophie pranked me by shoving a cupcake in my face. So I remembered what I read and I thought it would be a good prank so I pulled up the fan fiction on my phone and started to read it. When she realized what I was reading, Sophie's eyes started to tear up which I was not expecting. The rest of the team was joking around with her but she ran out of the party. Now she's not showing up to her shifts or answering my calls or texts. It's weird that Sophie is acting like this since she usually loves pranks and stuff so now I'm wondering if I took it too far but I also feel like she shouldn't have been writing those things about me and her too. Am I the arsehole? And we do have an update to this story, of course. But we'll start off with Stripe Badger, who says, so here's an interesting question for you, OP. What's the prank? What's the joke? What are everyone supposed to laugh at? Oh, that's right. They're meant to laugh that Sophie is bad at doing something she works hard at. Let's all laugh at Sophie. Not as something funny she did, not because of something you did to her, just at her efforts and passions. That's not a joke. That was bullying. You're the arsehole. And also delusional if you seriously think that a setting and rehashing real conversations means she's using a character as a proxy for you as opposed to just using what she knows as part of her writing. Sabrina Spellman says you're the arsehole. That wasn't a prank. You intentionally embarrassed her in front of people. A prank is something silly when you both laugh together. This was mean-spirited and it humiliated her. You should apologize. Rainbow Scissor says, I feel like you already know you're the asshole, and you were saying she shouldn't have been writing those things about me and her too. What? It was fan fiction, not technically about you or even tangentially, I always struggle with that word, connected to you in any way until you went and found it and read it to your co-workers. You totally broke her trust and then embarrassed her. This is like reading someone's diary in high school. Not a prank. This is incredibly hurtful. Do better. Sweet Smile says you're the arsehole, that's not a prank. That's revealing a private side to her that she trusted you enough to share but didn't want others to know. That was a serious violation of trust and an arsehole move. Also, her writing honestly might not be about you and she's just combining scenes from work to make her character sound more realistic. But I'm sure you won't have to worry about it anymore because you probably shamed her into quitting writing. Hidden Destiny says everyone sucks here. I don't know why everyone is acting like it's normal to take conversations you've had with someone and put them in erotic fanfiction. I'd feel violated if someone did that to me. It's a breach of trust. Those are private conversations, not tools for shippers to get off on. I'm a fanfiction writer and would never do that. It's vile. But publicly exposing your subordinate's crush on you in a fashion designed to humiliate her is unacceptable. 
She did something immature, low-key wrong, but she thought in a private space. It was naive, but she didn't deserve to be dragged over the coals by a married man with power over her who is old enough to have known better. And dude, if she's putting your convos in erotic fanfiction, you've been flirting with her. So stop acting so superior. So then OP comes in with the update which says this is an update post and then here's the original and then shares the link. Thank you everyone for reading and giving your honest feedback. It's been a couple of weeks since I first posted that day and I want to let you know that I've read most of your comments and had a hard time accepting that I'm an arsehole. However, after reading and rereading and remembering the situation, I feel that your votes are fair. A lot of you advised that I leave Sophie alone, which I did. But what surprised me is that she actually came into work to her next scheduled shift after that post went up. I was intending on leaving her alone, but she approached me first, so we sat in the back room and had a discussion. I was ready for her to hand in her resignation or talk about taking this to higher ups, as some of you had said. But instead, she apologized to me. She said that she was sorry for writing fanfiction at work and for including personal stories. She admitted that the character was about me after all. After reading all your comments, I was beginning to think that our time together was just inspiration, but she ended up confessing to me. I told Sophie that she had no reason to be sorry and that I had to be responsible for my actions. I acted inappropriately with her at work and allowed these feelings to develop instead of setting boundaries. I also humiliated her and read her diary in front of the whole class and I deeply apologized. She actually ended up laughing about it, but I do admit that it felt kind of like she was taking the higher ground and trying not to seem hurt by it. I asked her if she wanted to transfer to a different location and she said no. She also said she wasn't looking for a new job. I had a separate talk with the rest of the team about what happened and she joked around with them. Sophie's maturity taught me a lot about myself and the things I need to work on. So that's what I've been doing. She and the rest of the team still like to do pranks, but I stay out of it now. As a manager, I've got to be in control and focus on the success of the restaurant. Sophie and I are on good terms again, but we've established clear boundaries and it seems like she's starting to move on. Thank you all again for helping me realize that I'm an arsehole. And I think we could see the arsehole in the first post, but it's always good to see in an update someone realizing how wrong they were and, and growing from that and becoming better from what happened. I think the worst posts are always the ones where they get the arsehole verdict and they come in after and say, how dare you call me an arsehole and then try to justify their actions time and time again. But to realize how wrong you were and accept it and try to move past it, got to be a good thing, right? But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. So this next story comes from wonderful18490 who says that I hate that my boyfriend's a gamer. My boyfriend, 28 male, and I, 21 female, have been together for about six months now, but we were friends with benefits for about a year and a half before that. We've been living together for about five months now, and this is my first time ever living with a partner. I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant with our son. He's put off quite a lot because he would rather be gaming. I've done all the baby stuff, went to all the doctor's appointments myself. I do most of the cooking and cleaning. It makes me feel like we're just roommates. He gets up maybe an hour before work, goes to work, comes home and will game until he has like four or five hours of sleep left before he has to wake up. That's all he does, game, sleep, work, smoke weed, maybe sex and eat. I understand how fun and how much of an escape video games can be. I love to game myself. I just haven't had time for it because I've been trying to get things ready for the baby and took up more shifts at work to save up. It makes me resentful and jealous that he can do fun things, but I can't. Someone has to do the work and it's all fallen on me. Recently, I've been getting at my boyfriend about him helping me with the nursery. There's still so much left to do and he promised me weeks ago that this is something that we would work on together. I'm the only one that's done anything for it so far and honestly, I'm the only one that's done anything baby related throughout my pregnancy. When he asked me to move in, he made a lot of promises that he hasn't kept up with. I've told him how I feel about it before and we recently had a big fight. I asked him a question and he told me to fuck off because he was playing his game and he ignored me every time I tried to talk to him. So I took out my phone and shut off the internet using the app. He absolutely lost it, like it scared me, and I asked him to leave. He called me all kind of names and said I was ungrateful that he should break up with me over something like that. 
I really didn't think he would blow up like that. I was just frustrated and tried to get his attention. He left that night and stayed at his brother's place. He said he won't go home yet and I apologized. I feel like I crossed the line. I didn't know it would just make everything fall apart. I feel like he really does hate me now. I don't know how else to apologize. I wish things were different. Edit, I'd like to add that when I found out I was pregnant and told him, he had to convince me to go through with the pregnancy and, and made many false promises to be better and to be a good parent. Slight update, I don't want to post a full update, but he decided to come back home today, so hopefully we can talk and maybe work things through. But I doubt it'll be any more productive than our previous conversations. I'm going to give him an ultimatum though. As much as I hate to, but something has to change. And we'll start off with Marshmallow, who says, if I did the math right, you were pregnant before you made it official. It sounds like he does not want this relationship, this family, etc., but is going through with it because he knocked you up and feels responsible. This is a relationship where the bricks are made of all the wrong materials. You need trust, love, respect, communication, dedication, and you have none of that. You have a man who is having a whole lot of regrets throwing a tantrum because, I am guessing, he feels his life is ruined he probably hates that this is happening. You can't change his mind of that. You can't change his behavior, his attitude, or his outlook on his newfound reality. You don't have a family with him. You don't have the foundation of a home with him. You and this baby deserve better, and I hope someday you find just that. I hope he says, yes, we weren't together when I got pregnant, and we made it official after I found out. The crazy thing is that I didn't even suggest that we make it official or that I move in. It was all his idea. I didn't even think that we should keep the baby if I'm honest, but he convinced me that we should and that everything would be okay. I feel like such an idiot for ever trusting that things would be different. An old school VG nerd says, I'll never understand how, and then goes back and reads the post. Ah, uh, okay. You met up as friends with benefits when you were 19 or 18, going on 19. He was 26. Right off the bat, he probably didn't value as much as you thought. Then he got you pregnant. You shouldn't apologize for anything, He's the one who isn't pulling his weight and is now acting like an asshole. He should see this thread. Mad Gear Missile says, Usually I'll jump to the age gap, but this wasn't supposed to be a relationship. It looks like it happened because of circumstance. I mean, there's definitely a notable difference between 21 and 28, but with a child along the way, this is a really difficult situation. OP, you can't stay with this dude. He seems awful. It doesn't even matter if he's a gamer. He's an absolute asshole more than anything. If it wasn't video games, he'd find another way to neglect you and you shouldn't have to deal with this. I sincerely hope you have other resources in your life because this guy seems like the worst person to depend on. You're already handling everything yourself. He's not going to step up and you don't need the dead weight. I'm wishing you the best of luck and I really hope you can get yourself out of this relationship safe and easily. And my thoughts while reading that was just pretty much mirroring the comments. It's like, why are you in this relationship? And as always, I know it's very easy for me to say, but uh, it was sad that you felt you needed to apologize to him after his actions, after what he's doing. But OP goes on to update the post, which says, so he came home yesterday and I told him I wanted to sit down and talk things through. I told him that the way he acted wasn't acceptable and that I won't be tolerating anything like that again. I also said that I would need to see him help me out around the house more. He apologized for how he acted and he even brought me flowers. We both head off from work so he took me out to eat. I've been craving Mexicans so he took me to my favorite Mexican restaurant. Everything seemed like it was resolved. When we got home from work I took a shower and he said we could work on the nursery together once I was done. By the time I got out and dried my hair he was playing on the computer again. I tried not to get frustrated and waited until he was done with the game to try and get his attention. He just gestured at me to leave him alone and said in a few minutes he would log off. I went and did some laundry while I was waiting for about half an hour and came back. This time when I tried to get his attention, he was much more annoyed and said that he would get to it tomorrow but he would come to bed with me tonight. So I just gave up and went to bed early since I was tired anyways. I woke up hours later around when he goes to bed. I could still hear him yelling on his game. I got up and asked him to come to bed. I guess his friends that he was playing with heard me and just started mocking me and making jokes. I could tell he was pretty drunk. I reminded him of our talk and how I can't put up with this forever. He jokingly asked if I would turn off the internet again and I said that I would if that's what it takes for him to actually do something. 
you could see the switch flipping him and he picked up a spare keyboard he just had on his desk and chucked it at me. Started yelling at me and absolutely lost it like he did the other day. Well, I packed my things and just left to go to my parents. At first, he made fun of me, called me a name, and then he started crying and apologizing. I didn't say a thing, grabbed what I could and took my car to my parents. I called him on the way, so they welcomed me in and I went straight to my old room. I didn't sleep at all last night and I called out of work today. I'm just done. I don't know why I expected anything to change. Edited to add a third update. The update to an update. Apparently, he had some outbursts at work in the past, which I knew, so I asked our co-worker if they had footage of that since they film everything. And there's footage of a freakout of him fucking a co-worker in the back room. So today's just been a great day. What the hell? Bloody hell. I was kind of... I don't know what to say about that last little update that she discovered. That I mean, in some ways it doesn't surprise me, but at the same time it was just like came out of nowhere and I was like, oh, deary me. That's an absolutely horrible situation for OP. I'm glad they're out of it and I really do hope that they don't go back into that situation as well. But what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, yesterday or the other day, depending when this post goes up, we covered a little couple of cheeky, wholesome stories to end the video off with. And some of you guys enjoyed that. So I thought, why not do that again today? I really enjoyed a little wholesome one now and then just to round off the video, hopefully get our moods up a little bit. Happy the Frog says, this happened when I was around nine or 10. I was out riding my bike with my mum, and halfway through the rail, my bike breaks down. Anyway, we couldn't carry the bike back home since it would take hours, so we were just stranded in that field. There were a few people on the trail who saw our inconvenience, but either they didn't have any bike knowledge to know how to fix it, or they couldn't be bothered to care. At least an hour had passed before this old man, and I mean like real old, he looked to be around 80, approached us and fixed our bike free of charge. He got his hands down to the grease and eventually after a few minutes I could start pedaling again. I thought that was a really wholesome moment. His kindness and coolness to our situation and that's why this memory sticks to me I guess. Craig101 says, Once went out to a restaurant for a meal. Earlier the same day we found out that one of my partner's relatives, someone they were close to, had killed themselves. We thought it would be a good idea to get out of the house and distract ourselves. Our waitress was lovely and spoke to us throughout the meal as it was quiet and she seemed fun. At the end of the meal and many wines, my partner was visibly emotional. Not crazy, just sad looking. The waitress asked us if we were okay and saw that my partner was upset, so she asked again. We told her what had happened. She was shocked and it was obvious she really felt for my partner. A few minutes later, she came over with some limoncello shots and said it's on the house, which was unexpected and lovely. We protested a bit and she said, I'm managing tonight and it's little things like this that make me like working here because I can make your night a bit better. What a legend. It gets even more lovely though. We asked her for the bill shortly after and when it arrived, it read zero pounds. She had discounted the whole bill, putting it through as wastage. We were shocked and had a tearful goodbye with her after many protests and finding it unbelievable. We had a three course meal, wine and beer, loads of sides. We went to town and she just covered it because my partner was sad. I'll remember it forever. She could have kept herself to herself and ignored us, but that moment of kindness meant too much to us that day and turned it from a shitty day to a less shitty day. And one more from Green Firefly Girl who says, I had a knock on my door and when I opened it, there was a stranger with a gift card to a local garden store for me. Apparently her kid had been pinching tulips from my garden every day to give to his mum and they wanted to pay for them. Once they figured out whose garden they were coming from, I had thought squirrels were doing it and had regretted planting them the year before, not being able to enjoy them. I spent the gift card on more bulbs. And one more, just so I can share something a little personal. Like, I've, I've spoke about my dad many times and his illness with mesothelioma and what he was going through. And he was someone that went to the shops every day to get, you know, his milk and bread and his, his daily newspaper as he used to do when he was able to talk. And he's a notorious chatter. <laughs> he will stop you and talk to you for hours if you let him. I think some people enjoyed it. Some people found it annoying, as you do, you know. Gotta get on with life sometimes.
but everyone in his local supermarket, and it was quite a big supermarket, knew him. You know, he'd find people stacking shelves and he'd just stop them and have a chat. <laughs> just like that, tell him about his life, ask about their life. And a lot of people, when I've been with him and doing it, I sort of stand there going, oh no, dad. <laughs> but they seem to, I think they enjoy it, like just getting away from work for the two minutes, you know. Obviously, there's going to be some people that's like, come on now, I'm trying to work here. <laughs> But he became very well known and over time as his illness progressed and he couldn't walk anymore because, you know, he just lost all the muscle in his legs, basically. And they noticed because my sister-in-law goes into that supermarket as well. They noticed that, you know, he wasn't coming in anymore. They knew about his illness to a point because my sister-in-law had told them, but they were always asking, where is he? Why isn't he coming in no more? Is he OK? And obviously didn't know the severity of his illness. But soon as they found out, they were buying him his local newspaper, like games magazines with like Sudoku and word searches and crosswords and stuff like that to keep him busy, keep his mind active, as they would say. And they would pass these on to my sister-in-law to give to my dad. Obviously, he never got to see them again, but I have a lot of love and respect for those people. Cool, send myself off there, but absolute wonderful people. But what do you guys make of today's collections of stories? Do you enjoy the wholesome ones as well? Let me know because I really enjoy putting them on the end of some videos as well because it, I think they're a nice little pick me up towards the end, especially if there's been a couple of rough stories in there. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support and time always means the absolute world so thank you so so much for being awesome and for being involved and hopefully i will see you <laughs> your cheeky so and so in the next one much love guys wake up get up stretch my legs eat some breakfast milk and eggs brush my teeth up wash my face throw my clothes on start my day wake up I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go. See the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that today.